In this episode of Pop Culture Weekly, I talk to the stars of the brand new film Dogman, including Caleb Landry Jones and Jojo T. Gibbs. Plus, I talk to the amazing brothers of Black Oxygen, the great band with a brand new viral hit. Let's go. Welcome to Pop Culture Weekly with Kyle McMahon from iHeartRadio. Your pop culture news, views, reviews, and celebrity interviews on all the movies, TV, music, and pop culture you crave weekly. Here's Kyle McMahon. Hello. Welcome to Pop Culture Weekly with Kyle McMahon from iHeart. Of course, I am Kyle McMahon, and I am so happy that once again you are hanging out with me to uh, discuss all things pop culture. We have a great show for you today with awesome interviews. We, I'm saying we, like there's a whole bunch of me, there's only me. I talk with Caleb Landry Jones and Jojo T. Gibbs. They star in the new film Dogman, which is a new film from Luke Passan, written by Luke. Insane movie. So Luke, if you for some reason don't know, is a French filmmaker behind such incredible films as La Femme Nikita. The Messenger, the story of Joan of Arc, The Fifth Element, Lucy, Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets, Leon, the Professional, Taken with, you know, Liam Neeson. He's got Dracula, A Love Tale coming up next, which I, I am really excited for. But his brand new film is Dogman. Dogman, it is insane, but like in a great way. So it's about this man, Doug, who's arrested while driving a truck full of dogs. And and Doug is played by Caleb Landry Jones. You then meet Jojo T. Gibbs, who plays his psychiatrist, Evelyn. And she's sent to interrogate him. And then through flashbacks, he tells the story of his life um, where he was a victim of... Anyway, it is batshit insane. And I love this movie. It's really, really great, and it is out, depending on when you listen to this, today. Well, I guess no matter when you've listened to it, it's out today. But uh, it's well worth your time. So I talk with Caleb and JoJo from Dogman. And then, and first up, I talk with the boys from Black Oxygen, David and Nick Lyle. They are brothers. They are incredible guys that you just want to hang out with them. David is singer, lead guitarist. Nick does drums, keyboards, obviously vocalist as well. They've released three studio albums and one EP so far, but they are currently making huge waves with their reimagining slash cover of the classic song Butterfly by originally from Crazy Town. The video on YouTube, which you can check out at the link in the show notes, has over 3 million views already. Um, it is crazy. You know, it's been at the top of the Apple charts. Um, you, you know, it's awesome. Really, really great song. I love it. And I love their videos, too. And they're very hands-on with everything that they do. So we're going to start out with the boys of Black Oxygen. Let's get it. What's up? Kyle McMahon here with iHeartRadio and Pop Culture Weekly. I am here with Black Oxygen, two brothers, David and Nick. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. We're happy to be here. Thank you for taking a care in our music. Of course. So we're going to get into uh, this this single that's been blowing up. But I want to go back for a minute first, if you don't mind. Um, yeah. from, from from what I know of you guys, you you got your start with a kind of battle of the bands. Right. That was kind of like what shaped the future for you. Is that right? Yeah, we, we did a uh, battle of the bands where we grew up in Kansas City. Uh, we lived here for 10 years. But we did a guitar competition that that I won uh, first place as well, and then uh, there was a producer that that uh, got got our music, uh, flew us out to L.A. with Jamie Fox in the studio, so got to really soak up the vibe, meet a lot of music contacts, and put out records of our own, and and um, you know we got a, a, a mini top Billboard hits, 
And then we have a, a, a world famous first place barbecue sauce. Well, it's in Walmart that came after the music. And uh, yeah, we did this, this new butterfly and that's a really cool story. And, and then like now uh, things are taken off to a whole new level. It's, I really appreciate that blessing. And now there's like all the major labels hitting us up for deals and stuff. So it's that, I guess you could say that's, that's the nutshell of the career and, 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 and <laughs> start to tell today. <laughs> well, and you had, you know, you've had what I think with your last album, 2019, you had a, a number what a number one yeah, song yeah. on the rock charts, right? Yeah, yeah, that was uh, most added Billboard mainstream rock. Uh, there was even a song and video on there with a friend of ours, Tech Nine. I don't know if you know who he is. Yeah, of course. Video legend as well, and uh, you know a lot of a lot of great collaborations. Uh, there yeah, there was a video on that particular album, The Times of Our Lives, that. Uh, a friend of ours, Danny Trejo, uh, was in a short film out of, out of one of the songs, Life is Beautiful, as well. So, and he's amazing. Wow. Yeah. He, yeah, he's a legend. Yeah, he's cool. <laughs> so so there's there's been a lot of cool things. I mean, after we put that record out, the barbecue sauce came out with the a Food Network uh, uh, chef stretch. So things have things have uh, just, you know, taken taken the uh, the growth with, you know, just putting in the hard work, putting in the hours and pushing every day, pushing. Yeah, yeah, pushing. And I got to ask, how did the barbecue sauce come up? Like, how, how did that happen? That's so amazing. You know, we're f from Kansas City and it's a huge barbecue town. But uh, basically, uh, the owner of this restaurant and uh, he's a Food Network guy as well. His name's Stretch. He he was a fan of our band and he was liking our posts and stuff like that. So David hit him up and he was like, hey, let's do something together. And he was like, let's do a barbecue sauce. So we took a week and uh, built a recipe and got it out there and they put it in competitions. It's in different stores and restaurants and it's just, it's done really well. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. That's we, awesome. We didn't any like yeah. uh, notoriety from it, you know, uh, and Nick's his one of his best friends, a uh, father used to be Wolfgang Puck's secondary chefs. And yeah, so Nick has a lot oh, of wow. great, great uh, uh, chef skills. Nick does. I just always so, love food. So, so when we turned <laughs> in, he was like, this is actually really amazing. Um, he wasn't just saying that he's like, I just don't bullshit it around. And, and so they, we didn't think anything of it cause we didn't know they've been, they put it in some competitions, but it won a couple years back fourth place by the national grilling and barbecue association just six months ago, it won a first place in another major competition for best place to use using it like on pork sandwiches. Yeah. There, it won this other festival, uh, zest fest in third place. So it's, it's kind of, second. it's our second place, yeah. second place. It's taken a, uh, a life of its own. And it's and also a great business to have, I mean, yeah. let alone music. Yeah. So uh, what's it called? Bang in barbecue sauce. You yeah, get it. Bang, at, I love online. that. Yeah. Walmart online or black auction music.com, but it's a lot of, it's like in shields online, different spots carry it in the country. So that's so cool. I I'm, I'm a huge barbecue fan, so I'm going to like go get it now and, and awesome. uh, yeah. test it out. Yeah. For sure. so, I love it. So now um, you have this big hit that from a classic song from, you know, Butterfly. And you guys not only did your own cover of it in your own way, but you had Shifty himself join you on the song. How did that come about? The way that it came about was we performed together like whatever, four years ago. And he's like, hey, you guys have really great music. Let me give you my number. And uh, he said that we're doing a, uh, a big tour across Canada in 2019. And I'd like to take you guys as direct support. And there's like whatever, 15 shows or whatever. So we, we did that and we were just, you know, traveling, uh, you know, working together, doing these shows and having fun, you know, getting to know each other. And he had, at that point, he's, he was, he thought it was really cool. We had a song with tech nine and we worked with Danny Trail and billboards. And he said, I see he has been following you guys. So he had followed us over, you know, through COVID through the next couple of years. And he saw we were still putting out music, still, still working hard and, and everything was just continuing to grow at a great pace. So uh, we had a podcast we started called the inspiration podcast, the black oxygen inspiration podcast. We've had like our friend, Matt Storm was with guns and roses on Danny Trejo. And so we had him on and uh, shifty shifty. We had shifty on and he was at our spot and he kind of teased in there about like he he's been, you know, interested in someone to remake a more current version. He's had a lot of offers over the years to hop on him, but he hasn't felt the right moment to do it. So uh, after that, uh, we were, we were hanging out. Um, and then he said that that's the one, one gift in his life that God has really blessed him with where he could still 
go anywhere in the world. And I, I thought he had said it was like platinum in 16 countries back in the day, day. But he, I remember he said it was number one in Billboard when it came out. But he said that still today, I mean, that's the that's the song that keeps him alive because he still gets paid every month off. It's in movies and TV still. So he just said that um, he said, I'd like to give you that guys that give you guys that song. And then just I, I would like to hop on it with you guys so you could carry it on to the next generation. Mm -hmm. But he but when it came to making it, um, it was all the same vibe because, like a, you know, it's like our, our music has really moved to pop and there's hip hop elements and stuff. There's also mainstream rock elements, but you know, I'd say pop. And and he said that if we're going to do it, he, he specifically wanted it to be pop for the new generation, for the new kids to love. And then uh, same with the video. He's like, if we're going to do the video, he wanted to have at least one jungle scene room, like in the original mm -hmm. video. Yeah. So yeah, we put that out and then um, yeah, it's only been whatever, three and a half months ago or something and it has over three and a half million views and yeah when it came out it was number it was number uh tw 12 on the u.s pop pop apple music when you go to the app on on there yeah. it, above taylor swift and stuff so he was he was really happy about it and we're, we were really i was thankful to be uh given that gift because you and i both know like that song is one song that i, I would say it's realistically one of the biggest songs in history i mean probably top couple hundred or hundred so yeah <laughs> yeah every you can throw throw a rock to pretty much anybody uh and seven people out of ten are gonna say oh i heard that that chorus because everyone just yeah. knows the word so yeah so, so uh to have that gift was very cool and he's like many people have hit him up over the years and he just said you guys truly deserve it and so i it was like man i'm i'm very humbled and yes we accept let's do it so we had a lot of fun doing that that project and i i will be forever grateful for that gift because not everyone gets a gift like that and that yeah then after that came out all of a sudden uh we've had you know different hits of our own and stuff but after that it's like okay you know everyone come this come calling all the you know, yeah. the, the, the Warner, the universal, the Sony, everyone's offering these major, a major deal now. So we're actually in the process of, of picking one, uh, of, we got all the contracts lined up and we're looking at picking the best one here soon. Uh, cause we've been in the studio writing our best album we've ever done called last one standing and, um, three months straight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Every day all eight pieces of art on it. You know, we've, you know, we've been working on it and and we've already sent it off and they're like, well, this is amazing. So uh, we're going to pick the best opportunity to roll with. And uh, and I, I can't wait for, you know, this summer for the world to hear our new album and tour that and everything like that. You know? Yeah. Do you have a date on that yet on the album? There's not an official date, but we're going to be deciding here in this next month on the deal we're going to go with. And then that'll determine. Yeah, yeah. We, we've already said. They've already said, okay, well, we we all really want you guys. What what is it that exactly that you want? Uh, we're willing to work with you guys. Um, because every one of them said we look back through your stuff. And nowadays it's it's pretty clear a lot of the the labels, you know, with music hard times, a lot of them are have less staff and everything, and they don't develop artists. They want the done package. And they said, yeah. You already have the the track record of of hits on your own with past managers and past investors and stuff we've built this thing like a machine so he's they like you guys have the music videos you've got albums you've got a great presence on social media great great numbers and they said you've done the collabs you are entrepreneurs you have barbecue sauce we just opened up a clothing line with a partner on sunset strip in la oh and, that's awesome so they're like they're like they they see a they see a, a, a let alone the music a big business future so on their ends i could see like you know, they're going to look at it like uh, half music and half business. And that's something where we have a lot of fun doing because we're on point. You got to be on point in everything to make yeah. it work. You know, you yeah. can't just one thing. You got to be a master of everything to yeah. make it because we've made it single as far as we've made it just with the two of us. We write, produce, mix everything, all of our music, you know, everything we build, the graphics, the arts. Nick does it. I'll make the business calls. I mean, we've managed yeah. manage manage all of our you know the the future deals the finance everything all on our own it's just the two of us yeah so they're, they're like they're like that's really impressive 
because the first thing when they heard the new album, they were said, what studio did you guys do this? What producer? And I said, it was just two guys two, And that's our home that, studio. That's what I like about the chemistry is you're getting two organic chemistry out of two related brothers. And cause we play all the instruments and everything on it. Yeah. yeah. What is it like? I got to ask you, you know, do you find it harder or easier that you are brothers and working together constantly? You know, I feel I feel like in some and again, this is me talking for you. So correct me. But I feel like in some instances, it it's like beneficial, like you guys know each other like the back of your hands. But then I also feel like maybe you're more comfortable to butt heads, too, you know? Yeah, I think there is a little bit of that. But realistically, it's like, you know, we just have the ability to communicate so well because we've spent our whole lives together. It's like there's if there is a little bit of butting heads, I think that, you know, we can let each other get away with more than we would someone else. But Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's just like, hey, I don't I think that this should be this way. And it's like, oh, you really think that? Yeah. okay, we'll change it. (laughs) And, you know, it's never everything's cool. Everything's super easy. And at the end of the day, we know we're always working towards the same unified goal. Yeah. At the end of the day, there's one goal. It's like to keep going to the top and it's not about, you know, money or or fame or anything like that. The biggest point we want to make is to inspire the world. You could be whatever you want to be if you work hard Mm -hmm. enough. So it's like, it's like uh, pushing positivity. Yeah. yeah, And everything. It's all about the best product, the best, best we could do at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It's like, I think if you go, you know, a lot of people don't go the extra mile, but we're, we're willing to go that extra mile. And, 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 and that's why, I wouldn't say it's luck. I, I would say it's because of hard work that doors keep opening. Uh, so it's it's been uh, it's been really neat to see a lot of the things open. And later in this October or November, there's going to be 30 days. We just did a deal to be in our first feature film. So that's there's awesome. A company uh, that just actually brought us on. We did a contract with Gum Media Partners. If people look them up. They've done Stallone's Rambo, Last Blood, Nicolas Cage's Primal. Wow. Uh, it, Zoe Kravitz film, like eight or nine really big movies. And mm-hmm. the the producer, the president, he was like, hey, I, I love your guys' music. Let's put you guys in a movie. I see you guys in your videos. You could be movie stars. We, we, we can do this. So, so there's a full script. I can't say the name of it yet, but... There's uh, and I can't say the name of the major actors, but there's some major A lists that are going to be there with this in the movie, and uh, we're going to be filming it this October, November, thirty days, most likely in Louisiana, and they uh, they have us literally playing ourselves in the movie. It's okay. a music thriller, and I was like, how many t- how how often does that happen where someone gets to play themselves? Because yeah. <laughs> they just wrote it about these two music guys, that, and 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 so. It, it's going to be fun. It works out. Yeah. Fun. Just be yourself. We know your guys' personalities. The the guy that wrote it knows us. And uh, sorry, there was a a weird emoji that popped up when you did that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they they wrote us as ourselves. And uh, I'm excited to to do it. Um, yeah. And I and I can't wait for that as well. So just a lot of things are on on the up, you know. And you said it's like a a thriller, like it's horror, a, or it's a music thriller. Uh, okay, less than horror, but yeah, a thriller. It kind of okay. it's sounding really, really cool right now. Yeah, I'm it's a huge that. horror fan. I'm a huge music fan. I'm obviously a huge movie fan. Uh-huh. Um, so I'm always interested when musicians are built into a project so like it's a project about two musicians so i'm like my ears are peaked you know what i mean yeah 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 so yeah, i'm excited to hear more about that yeah. when when you're allowed to talk about it um yeah, yeah, totally. what so what is next so you're going to be looking you know you're going to be deciding on you know which label which is an incredible place to be in by the way to be able to say we get to decide which label we want to go with and you're going to be deciding that coming up soon that'll lead to when you get a hard um date for album yeah, yeah. and then you're gonna are, are you gonna tour with the release of the album or you're gonna tour you're, yeah, you're there, gonna I set mean, the dates anyway and we've been yeah. talking with our, our 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 legal team in the next month we're gonna pick the deal uh we've got all the contracts lined up and then uh from there we've already said hey we want to release at this date i don't want to say it because i don't want it to be a hard thing but yeah 
uh, mm -hmm. but I wanted to come out during summer and the, in the main video to come out during summer. And then, uh, there are different shows to come from there as well of different tour dates. And just, you know, I think that the, 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 uh, summer is always like the coolest time to release music because people it's, it's more sunny outside and yeah. Windows Side are down. down around. Yeah. But that's, that's really the plan is there's a, there's a big, plan behind the release and and all the marketing and ideas that I have for all the videos and stuff. And then from there, it'll kind of, we got to, this will be the busiest year of our entire life. And so then after this is done, we've got all this mapped out for all the video shoots and the making and all this stuff like that the album. And then come time November, there's going to, we'll have to train for this film about a month out. Then we'll shoot it for 30 days. And then, then uh, everything will be on the up and then we'll, going at the start of 2025 and cashing for the next bigger deal, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You mentioned luck. You know, I always hate when people say to me, oh, you're so lucky or whatever, like, I, because uh, there, there's a bit of luck in it, but you're, I feel like, and I don't think people say this on purpose, um, but like you're negating the hours and hours and hours that they don't see that we put into whatever it is we're doing, you know, I, you know, so it always bothers me personally when somebody's like, you know, you're so lucky that you get to do that. No, bruh. I mean, a little bit of his, his luck, but I, you know, slave over exactly. this, you, you know what I mean? Like you're exactly. sleeping and I'm on my laptop at 3 AM, you right. know, trying to think of or organize or whatever for the next month. So like, just like, <laughs> just like I, I, I heart is one of the coolest radio stations to be a part of in the world. You know, mm -hmm. you worked hard to get there. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and yes, you know, there was a bit of luck in how I came to it. I didn't go to broadcasting school. I was doing videos, you know, YouTube videos and podcasts and stuff. And, uh, I had done a series of Oprah, Oprah's life class, a show that she had on own. I ended up doing like six episodes with her, which was that, that probably was luck that that <laughs> happened. But, but then from there I decided, you know, I want to keep doing content for millennials and, and, you know, make uh, videos for self-improvement and stuff like that. And then I started interviewing celebrities where I would have long form conversations with them about their craft. And it wasn't so much as let's, you know, uh, hype up this latest project as it, it, that was a part of it, but it was more like, tell me about why you're an artist and what drives you and that sort of thing. And they started popping off. And then the opportunity came up with iHeart and I'm like, I didn't, are you sure you want to talk to me? Like, I didn't go to broadcasting school. I've never, you know, didn't do college radio or anything. And oh. they were like, yeah, like what you're doing with video and podcasting and all is, you know, what we're looking to get into. And so, but then I came in here and I, you know, the one thing I always say, you know, I'm not the best at anything, but I will outwork anybody. And, exactly. uh, and I, and you know, I'm obviously generalizing there, but like, um, obviously there's tons of hardworking people here. But the one thing that I can control is how much I put in, you know what I mean? I can't control what somebody's reaction is going to be or if I'm going to get a deal or not, but I can control how many hours I put in and how much I put in, which is probably, as you guys know, kind of, you know, with as much hands on as you are in your careers can also be a detriment sometimes because it's hard to turn it off, you know, but, right. uh, but it's so important, you know, I, I think it goes with many creatives that there's that side that people don't see all the years that you've hustled, you know, all the years and I'm making this up for you, but I've done free shows and to anybody that would listen to you or whatever to, to get where you are today, you know, That's and that it's all a journey. You know, I always feel like, journey. exactly. It's, it's never an over, you know, somebody said something about you're like an overnight success at iHeart. And I'm like, what? Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, overnight success for the last 15 years, maybe, if you're considering that overnight. Um, I, could tell, I could tell you're great, too. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I this you have great vibes. This is actually, this is one of the favorite interviews I've done in a long time. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I hate interviewing. And what I mean, I love talking to people. I hate interviewing. So, yeah. like, I don't, I'm not the type who will, you know, do cue cards and all that stuff. One, because I'm horrible at it. I'll be like, uh, how did you like <laughs> record it? You know, it's like, that's so, so I generally only talk to people that I enjoy their work and I want to know more about them. And that's just more organic for me, uh, because I'm curious about 
what you're doing and why anyway, you know what I'm saying? And so I do love what I do. And similar, similar, similarly, you know, I, I get that vibe from you guys that you're doing it because you love it. And whether you make a dollar or a hundred million dollars, you'd be doing it anyway. You know, that, that's right. That's right. You know, it's all about just the crap, you know, making the music and all that stuff. I really enjoy the process from making the music, shooting the videos, mm -hmm. making the, you know, meeting great friends along the way. And, and it's, it's all about, you know, just it's, it's a good time. And, you know, with you sure. too, like with interviewing on so many greats in the, in the world, I was curious, one of my questions for you while we're on here was who was, who would you say was one of your like top most enjoyed interviews you've done? Like, uh, Ooh, um, <sighs> I've seen you've done some really cool people. I checked you out before you hopped on here. Oh, thanks. I, I you know, I've done like, um, so Robert De Niro. So I generally don't get nervous. Robert De Niro, I was nervous for, yeah. um, not because it's like, oh my God, it's Robert De Niro, which, oh my God, it's Robert De Niro. But I was nervous because before I went into the hotel, you know, they the production had it set up in the hotel, in a hotel room. And um, before I went in, I had too much time to think before um it was call time and i'm like oh god like this is robert de niro like that that wasn't good for me to have that idle time um right. and so i started getting really nervous and i was wearing crocs because i'm not I, I went to catholic school for 12 years and i swore when i graduated that i was never wearing a tie and a suit coat and <laughs> you know all that again except for weddings or funerals and so far i've been able to stick to that but so it's just me. So I'm wearing Crocs to interview Robert De Niro um, because I wear Crocs like everywhere or slides or whatever. And he's like sitting like this and he's, you know, looking at me as I walk in and I see he kind of looks at my shoes and I'm thinking, oh, Jesus, he's probably thinking you're interviewed here. You're here to interview me and you're wearing freaking Crocs. And so I kind of was like, oh, I wore my and you know how Crocs have the um, you can like do the. Yeah. You know, this. Yeah. Yeah. Sport modes. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I'm wearing my fancy Crocs for you. I was like, later, these will be my casual Crocs. And he started cracking up <laughs> and that kind of like just broke the ice for everything. And it ended up being an awesome interview. So, I mean, that was huge for me professionally and as a big movie fan, fan, um, Mike Posner, who I absolutely love. And I've gotten to spend a lot of time with him. Um, I went to do a couple of days with him on his walk across America and, um, he came and we did a like a 45 minute long form interview about his entire career and life. And um, that is probably my favorite interview because of how real I feel like he was. Um, he, you know, how nitty gritty we got into being a, just a creative and okay. he's so honest and truthful and wears his heart on my sleeve. Like I feel I do that. We just had such a great connection that that's probably my favorite interview. Probably my favorite. That's awesome. very cool. How about for you guys? You've been interviewed by tons of people. What's, what's been your favorite besides obviously me. I mean, um, uh, <laughs> but we, we've had a lot of, a lot of great interviews. Uh, it's, you know, to be totally honest, there's been so many, yeah, I don't remember exactly off the top of my head. You know, I just yeah. know that in in real time, this is one that I really enjoy, and and um, that makes me think too about interviews. Is like to everyone that's because a lot of people will see this. Everyone that's watching this too, you know, I want to let everyone know in the world that we appreciate you checking out the new butterfly and For sure. keep watching it up, streaming it up, and mm -hmm. there's like all types of new merchandise on BlackAuctionMusic.com. We just we just did a, a clothing deal with this spot the embroidery studio on sense that this guy designs for like Taylor Swift and a lot of these big icons. And he's, he's like, I see you guys are going up. I'd like to be a part of your journey. So That's he backed awesome. the clothing line and he, he does like these really high end clothing fashion pieces. He was, you know, like two months ago, you know, he's, he, he, he like, we started working on this really deeply after talking about it and we got a few pieces dropped for the butterfly. So uh, that was, that was another dream come true really of nick's because nick's always loved fashion you know yeah it was a lot of fun 
Yeah. And did you ever think when you guys started out, like not only would you be doing music, but, you know, a clothing line, a these awesome videos with, you know, some incredible artists, you know, doing a song blessed by the the man himself, you know, doing a a kind of reimagining of a classic song, you know, uh, a actual movie and, you know, barbecue sauce. I mean, did you ever imagine in your head like this is what? that's going to look like i never i never imagined like an exotic clothing line i never imagined a barbecue sauce i never re- knew the barbecue sauce at all that was totally random in real time and <laughs> you know and then they came up and then there's a cool factor which produced in the midwest like just being going to see it even and then you know all these other things that come from it it's just a really the the blessing the cherry on top you know like the blessing yeah, yeah. but it's all uh it's all a very special thing to you know part of it and i always knew i always did know just since i was a kid somehow in some way that i was going to be in a movie because i always i love watching movies that's i'll watch movies all the time when if i'm free <laughs> it's always inspiring to you know like the dark knight uh, with christian bell like the joker that acting in there was always that's my favorite movie still today that yeah mm-hmm. yeah just, it's one of my tops it's so good yeah. But we did our we did our our acting training and everything for two years and behind the scenes in his school and we, you know, you learn all these techniques and you know how to get to the dark places and how to, you know, pra- you know practice the script correctly and everything like that. So you know behind the scenes we really put in our work. It's it's just we've had different opportunities, but you know you want to present yourself in the best way possible. So it's like when this film came up and they said, okay, well, you're not going to be the 50th on the call sheet you're not going to be an extra walking in the back of the cafeteria i mean this is you guys are going to be like top at the top in the top four actor leads in this in there you guys with these other stars so it was the perfect opportunity so to like sign off and be like okay because that'll just bring in more and more opportunities and yeah so yeah do, uh, magic I love it. David, Nick, thank you so, so much. I can't thank you enough for speaking with me. I'm excited for, you know, everything. It's like you guys keep hitting peaks that and then you go to the next higher peak. You know, it's it's an enjoyable ride to watch. I love the song. I love the success for you. And I'm going to come see you when hopefully you'll hit Philly this summer. Sounds yeah, great. Awesome, Sounds great. Man. Look forward to meeting, kicking in person sometime. So absolutely. Sounds absolutely. Great. Cool. Thank you, guys. Peace. Black Oxygen. David and Nick are amazing. Such great guys. I really am going to go see them when they perform on tour this summer. We've got all their links in the show notes. I can't wait to get their barbecue sauce, too. You know, I love me some barbecue sauce. So there you have it. Black Oxygen. Love those boys. All right, we're going to take a break to pay the bills from our advertisers. Stay with me, and I'll see you in 60 seconds. All right, welcome back. Thanks for letting us pay the bills. We love our advertisers. They allow me to continue bringing great interviews with people like Black Oxygen and Caleb Landry Jones to you, and then you and I get to talk about it on social. So thank you for that. So I talked a bit about Dogman at the top of the show and, you know, what it's about. I talk with the stars of Dogman, including Caleb and JoJo. So Caleb is, besides an actor, is also a musician, but he played Banshee in X-Men First Class. Jeremy and Get Out, love that. Red in Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. He played Caleb in The Last last Exorcism, which I loved. He was in The Florida Project as Jack, which, you know, geez, I was a very early supporter of The Florida Project back when that came out. I talked with the, you know, um, the filmmakers behind it and, of course, some of the stars and uh, love that unique film. In his latest, he is starring in Dogman as Douglas. So I talked to him as well. Oh, and he was in the Twin Peaks like edition twin peaks the return or whatever as steven which i uh, at at some point i want to do a whole episode or two on twin peaks because wow but uh anyway so there's caleb and then jojo t gibbs 
She plays Haiti, the, Hattie, the lead role in uh, the series 20s on BET. And now she stars in Dogman as Evelyn. And she has a very interesting and juicy role. So I'm exciting, excited to talk to them. Let's get right into it. Caleb Landry Jones and Jojo T. Gibbs. First of all, thank you both for speaking with me. I really appreciate it. No, thank you. Of course. I love the film. Um, It is powerful, crazy. I I love it. Uh, For for both of you, what drew you to to Dogman? Luke Besson and 123 dogs. <laughs> and how about for you, JoJo? Um, well, I uh, I got the audition really hastily, and I read it real quick and saw, of course, Luke Besson, and then I saw Caleb's name, and I was like, hell yeah. Like, I definitely hope I get this role. And, um, yeah, that was that, – that, that's all it took for me, really. Yeah. <laughs> For uh, Caleb, you both are incredible actors and you both do incredible uh, performances in the film. Jojo, you play the therapist that is kind of bringing out this story. And Caleb, you play the the person who is, you know, telling their story. And I and I mean this with 100 percent love and as a compliment, Caleb, but your performance is batshit insane um, <laughs> in, a, in an amazing way. What is it like to to play a character who is so complex and layered and insane in in in, in so many ways um i i was pro- I'm, I'm i'm focused on the the, the little things like uh, one foot in front of the other foot um uh, real as soon as i start thinking about it uh, kind of emotionally or with any real intellectual <laughs> you know anything He's so i start hard. to get away from something but uh so luke gave me a lot of things to kind of get in my head and to um pl- play with and spend time with um and so i was doing those a lot i was doing all those things um and then we would shoot the film but it wasn't until jojo arrived and we'd never met each other uh and luke kept us separate um when sh- when she when she arrived and uh, so the first scene we did, we hadn't met each other, but the way JoJo's playing Evelyn, um, what Evelyn is in the film for Douglas, um, uh, what he's able to share because of who she is, is really um, because of her uh, as, a, as, an, as an actor and, uh, and, and as the character. But... Um, and this got into, I feel like this is where the discovery, if any discovery happened for myself or something, there was something that happened in these three days with JoJo <laughs> over this time where, ah, you're right, hmm. Well, what about guilt? Well, guilt is da 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 hmm, da 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 hmm, who cares, da 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 And I found myself reasoning and not reasoning and, and, uh, and uh, Evelyn saying some things that would... Uh, okay, that's tough. You're right. Mm, but is it murder? No, it's not murder. Uh, but maybe it is. And, and it, was, it was nice to be confronted suddenly with these things because I don't think Douglas is in, in the way <laughs> that, that we are as an audience, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know uh, judging him based on his actions. Mm-hmm. Sorry, that was a little convoluted. And a little- no. No, I love it, More and uh, and you know I think it speaks to the the complexity of um of the character and of the film. Thank you both so much for speaking with me. I can't wait for everybody to see. Listen, you guys asking me, keep talking. Shoot, I need a resume Thanks. boost. <laughs> <laughs> Have Give a great me a day. Letter of recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb Landry Jones and Jojo T. Gibbs. Dogman is out right now. You got to see it. It is incredible. It is batshit insane. That's all I could say. I don't know how else to describe it, but it is amazing. Luke Bassan never fails to amaze and make incredible art. 
Black Oxygen, too. You can check out all of their info on the show notes. Let me know what you think of Black Oxygen. Let me know what you think of Dogman. And, of course, my interviews. Send your hate mail and your love mail and your comments to whatever it is you're watching or consuming, listening to, whatever. Let's talk about it. Let's talk pop culture. We got some great stuff coming up next time as well. So I'll see you then. I love you. See you next week. We are. Thank you for listening to Pop Culture Weekly. Hear all the latest at popcultureweekly.com. Dog man, baby, sugar, baby. A dog man, the dog man, a baby. You're my doggy man, sugar, baby.